Okay, hey guys. So I should be doing so many other things, but I'm not going to. We're gonna work on this because that's where my brain and creativity for the moment wants to go. I don't know what I'm gonna call this technique or idea. If you have thoughts on that, I would love if you put them down in the comments below. Um, for the moment, we're gonna just call the video Whatever I decided to title it, art as therapy? I don't know. Anyway, for this technique, you're gonna need a few things. It's gonna be messy. So um, how messy is totally up to you and maybe you don't wanna take the precautions I'm doing because you don't wanna do it inside, you wanna do it outside. That totally works, but I'm doing it inside. So I took a couple of boxes and I made trays out of them and then I lined them with some parchment paper. I have some mini four by four canvases. I have a whole bunch of them. Um, ones that are black, ones that are white. And I don't have enough push pins, um, but I do, because I do occasionally do acrylic pouring, I have push pins to put on the back of the canvas so that when you set it down, it's up off of the bottom of the box so things can drip off. Um, so we're gonna just use what we have and some of them will be up and some of them won't and we're gonna just go with whatever happens. But anyway, um, it's probably a good idea to have something to hold the canvas up off of whatever you're resting it on. You don't, again, you don't have to have that. You could just see where this goes. You're gonna need some watery paint. Now I have pouring medium because I used to do acrylic pours. So you'll see a variety of colors here next to me and they have pouring medium in them. They're just your basic acrylic paints. You can thin out your paints with pouring medium if you have it. If you don't have it, um, use um, slow dry medium or use a fluid matte medium or just use water. This is an art therapy technique. Um, that doesn't mean that for me anyway and that doesn't mean you're going to save it for posterity. Maybe you're gonna make it, let it dry, and then burn it. I don't, you know, I wouldn't, don't go out of your way and buy anything special. And in that regard, we're gonna pause here for a disclaimer. I am not a mental health professional by any stretch of anyone's imagination. I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder and depression. I myself am on medication and under counseling. Now, this is what I'm doing to help myself. If you are struggling with mental health issues, I do recommend you go reach out and get some help. Talk to a professional, get medication if you need it. I will include a resource in the video description down below. Please go get help if you need it. I am not a professional, all right? All right, that being said, let's continue. All right, so something else I'll put in the video description is where I got this. Now this is a chart of colors and emotions that you can associate with the colors. Do you have to stick to something like this? Of course not. And there's a lot of these all over the internet. This is the one that I thought spoke to me. I did laminate it because I do think I wanna use this for future reference. Um, and like when we did the emotion zombie dolls, with my Art Foamy Zombie uh, stamp. Um, we are going to associate colors with feelings and emotions. So I, before I got started, I took some just plain old note paper and I sat and I just started writing. And they don't have to make sense. They don't have to, can you even see that? Hold on. There we go. They don't have to make sense to anybody but you. Um, I would keep them, my canvases are only four by four, so I kept them pretty small, and I did go ahead and pre-cut them out. And we are gonna use these in our piece, and I'll show you how. All right, so I'm gonna take a piece, and I do think I'm gonna start with a black one. And yeah, I'm gonna start with a black one. I'm gonna start with this one. And so strong emotions, uh, anger, passion, danger, like all of those I associate with red, red colors. So we're gonna start with red. And have like an orangey red.
And then I'm going to Now I'm using thin paper on purpose because it'll sort of embed itself into the paint. It may absorb some of the paint. The writing might get blurry. As you can see right there, I got my got some paint on the glove and it's on the on the paint. I'm okay with all of that. So I don't want you to try to make a certain kind of a picture. I don't want you to try to make a certain design. I just want you to express your emotions and colors on the little canvases. I'm gonna do that. I'm going to fast forward through the process for you all here on YouTube. The patrons will get more of a chatty as I'm doing it video. So if you want more chatty about um, what I'm doing and why I'm using the colors I'm choosing um, for the other canvases, um, then join Patreon. They get a little bit longer videos for these, plus they also get a sneak peek on some stuff. So anyway, the link for my Patreon is down in the video description in my Linktree links, list of links along with all the rest of my social media. All right, that's it. Let's get going.
hey, we're going to do this this way. You're in my hand. Like, anyway. So the pieces are dry, mostly dry. They're not completely dry, but they're dry enough for me to take them out of the boxes, um, trim the edges a little bit where the paint um, spilled over, made lumps and drips on the back that I didn't want. Now, if this is sort of an art therapy piece that you're gonna work on getting all of your emotions and feelings out, and then you're going to let them go by burning the piece, and there's no shame in that, then you don't have to go through any of those steps. Just let it dry and then go shove it in a fire somewhere safely of course and I don't recommend yeah safely of course I don't know that I recommend doing that for me it doesn't necessarily work but yeah do things with precaution um, I also spent some time um, cutting apart a cardboard box um, if you're like me especially because of the pandemic you're ordering some things in because you can't find them at the store so I cut apart a cardboard box an Amazon box from my coffee because that seems to be one thing I can't find. Anyway, four by four square tiles and you definitely could do what we did on these. You also could do a version of this um, by doing um, expressive splatters of colors of your emotions on these on the jelly plate, right? So I have another idea that we're going to use these for that's a bit different. It'll involve four by four square tiles and the jelly plate and a Sharpie marker. Stay tuned for that video. Anyway, I hope that this helps you all. I'm going to pan, or I'm gonna to switch to the um, vision of the um, pieces um, all set up in order and um, with the top or weight of the piece uh, being positive and the bottom part, the positive sort of crushing the the negative, right? Well, for me, that's what that symbolizes. Anyway, um, yeah. If I can do this, you can do this. So anyway, I hope it helps you out. I hope that you find some uh, peace, that you get some help if you need it. Um, check um, your um, local doctor and um, get some help, get some counseling if you need it. Um, there is a website down below I will put down for reference uh, for anybody in the U.S. that needs it. If you are outside the U.S. and you have a mental health um, sort of helpline website address or phone number you want me to add to the video description on these videos, I'm more than welcome to do that. Please either private message me or leave it in the comments. And um, yeah, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Reminder, I am not a mental health professional. I'm a patient. This is what I'm doing to help myself. If you need help, go get it. All right, that's it. Let's go see what they look like. I'll see you later.